OpenGL parameters. Um, for now, we don't really want any of this stuff in here. So from the GL draw arrays all the way up to that first matrix mode, we want to delete. So we get rid of that. Um, the next thing we want to keep are the last two lines in here. So if you can imagine um, up here, we've gone and bound our frame buffer to be writing to this background frame, not to the screen. We then do, um, we then draw our game scene. So in here we draw game scene. And then the next thing we have to do is we have to take what we've just drawn in that frame buffer and stick it onto the screen. And that's what the next two lines of code are doing. We first of all bind um, to the render buffer what the view render buffer is uh, and we then present that onto the screen. Okay, so we actually are showing to the screen what's been taken or drawn in the frame buffer and is now going to be on the render buffer. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. We're swapping those over. And that's really it. So that's obviously where we're going to have a majority of our drawing code is going to go in there. Um, but for the moment, we don't have to worry about anything else on that. The next set of arrays are really things that we don't have to touch with. The, these are methods that have been created by the template and they do what their name implies, really. Um, they create a frame buffer, which using um, OpenGL and things like generate frame buffers and generate render buffers, because you can have multiple of these if you need to. Um, we're actually creating the buffers necessary, the, the, the areas of memory necessary to actually have what we're going to draw on screen and what we're going to be drawing in our frame buffer in the background. So we have a create. Uh, we also have a destroy as well, so we can get rid of them if we need to. And the next method that we see is the method that we saw being called from within inside our delegate, which is this start animation method. Um, and in here, what it does is it basically just kicks off a timer, um, a standard timer, which is repeated, which is why we have yes at the end of repeat here. The target of the method that is going to be run or the target for the, um, the actual timer itself is self. So it's this class that's going to be called. And we can see here that every time this timer triggers, it's going to run the draw view method or call the draw view method, which we've just been looking at the slide up above. OK, so that's all that happens is it kicks off a timer that 60 times a second is going to call draw view. So pretty straightforward. The next set of methods just really deal with um, stopping the animation and setting the animation timer um, and setting the animation interval as well so that we can actually see um, what is going on, uh, sorry, so that we can actually define how many times a second the timer should actually be run and what it should be doing. And then lastly, we have the normal um, deallocation routines that are standard. Okay, so we've gone through some of the uh, standard methods there that are inside our EAGL view class. And we can now start adding some of the code that we need to actually get this project um, to a point where we can start writing our game. So what we'll do is we'll go back up to the, the top here and uh, you'll remember that we put in this little comment earlier, uh, OpenGL init code. So this is where we want to put in some of our code now, which is going to configure OpenGL for us to use as part of our game. So I've already got some of this code that I'm just gonna paste in here, um, like so. I'm not gonna go through today what this code is doing. Um, what we'll do is we'll cover this off in some other tutorials when we actually start using some of this stuff. Um, but it's really just making sure we are setting up the screen, setting up the screen dimensions, setting up how things are going to be drawn to the screen. So the kind of blend functions we can use, which later on we'll do and handle things like transparency and so on. We're also setting up the fact we want to use textures uh, and textures are the term given to images that you want to actually display on the screen. Uh, we're also doing things like disabling depth because we don't need depth in 2D games. We only um, are looking on the X and the Y plane, not the Z plane, which is in and out of the uh, screen. And uh, we then, last of all, something which we will play with a little bit today is uh, we are setting the clear color at the bottom here. And what the clear color does is, um, maybe as the name actually says, whenever you clear the screen, the GL screen, you can define the color you want to be used to actually clear the screen with. Uh, and at the moment, we're defining it as black. You'll, you'll see as we go through that OpenGL for a lot of these things normally accepts value ranges of zero to one and they're floats. Um, and it does speed things up for GL. So zero is, is completely black for all of them, red, green, and blue. And one would be full, full intensity. Uh, the last option here is alpha. So you'll see when we start playing with colors later on that you can define the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha. So you've got lots of opportunity to uh, configure things as you want to. 
So from our point of view, that's, that's pretty much um, all we need to do now for actually configuring the screen uh, and actually setting up the OpenGL stuff. And as I say, we'll cover that in more detail later. Now we're gonna move on and look at the main game loop that we need to create. So at the moment we are 60 times a second calling our little timer and that is calling the method that we've got over here which is the draw view method okay now that's fine but um, having everything crammed in here so having all of your game logic as well as the drawing of your game entities all in one method can get a little bit complicated um, it is how they've done it inside crash landing they've got both game logic and rendering inside there together um, but it is a fairly simple game so it's not that bad having it in one method. What I wanna try and do is having done some reading on this um, is use the best practice out there, or what seems to be the best practice out there, which is splitting up, drawing to the screen from the logic of the game. So in other words, we have a method which will be responsible for moving our enemies and our, our good guys and bullets and things like that. And we'll have another method which is then responsible for drawing them to the screen, which will be this one. So tying those two things together, we need to create a main game loop. So we need to create another method, which will actually be the method called by the timer. And it'll be this method that will then be responsible for going and making sure the logic is updated for the game, and then going and making sure that the graphics are drawn for the game. So what we'll do, we'll do it right above the draw view that we have here. We will create a brand new method, and we're gonna call this um, main game loop. Okay, something very simple. And in here, there's gonna be a few items that we need. Now, at the moment, we have a timer which is kicked off 60 times a second. But if you look in the documentation, it's, it's, it's his best efforts, basically. It will try and run as often as it possibly can to meet that time frame. Um, but it might be a little bit late sometimes, and it might be a bit of early, a little bit early sometimes. So, if we let that happen, we may actually start to see some jagged movement in our game. We might see things skip slightly um, as they are updated late. So instead of it being 60 frames a second, we suddenly see the frame rate drop. And one of the ways of tackling that is every time we run through our main game loop, we have a look and we see how much time has passed since we last ran through the game loop. And we use that and we call that the delta. And we use that when we're calculating the movement of anything so that if we were sort of calculating it in milliseconds, we can then in our game decide that character A is going to move at however many pixels per minute or fractions of a pixel per millisecond. Um, and it means that by using delta, if the timer isn't quite accurate, delta makes up for that. So we always get an accurate, consistent speed across the screen, even if the timer isn't giving us the accuracy that we're after. So that sounds probably more complicated than it is. Um, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to create just a couple of variables that will keep track of that particular time that we're after. So I'm gonna use CF time interval types here, which is what they were using inside Crash Landing. And I'm gonna call it time. And if you look at this code, you'll recognize it as a code that does come from Crash Landing and that they were using themselves. Um, I then need to have a float because I need to actually store the delta that we calculate. Um, I have time, so I now need to set the time. So I'm gonna set time and I'm gonna set it using um, CF absolute time get current so we can get the current time. And then we calculate the delta. So delta equals time minus and something called last time. Now we haven't calculated, sorry, we haven't created anything called last time in a minute. So we'll need to go and do that in a second. Um, but we'll finish off and say that when we get to that point, we then say that last time equals time, because obviously we, when we run through next time, we want to know the difference between now and then. So I'll just close off that method. And what we need to do is we now need to create this last time property um, for use inside here. Now, obviously we want to store it outside of the method because we're gonna keep referring to it and it won't need, we therefore don't wanna create it each time. So I'm gonna go to my header here and I'm gonna add a new property at the end. Um, and again, this is gonna be a, a CF time interval, and this is going to be called last time. Okay, so if I flick back now, and that should do it, we'll save that. Now, if we do a build now, 